A footage obtained by The Sun newspaper shows Kate Middleton's visit to a local farm shop in Windsor on Saturday. Well, in the video, the princess can be seen alongside William carrying her shopping, looking happy and relaxed. But it seemingly hasn't been enough to satisfy all the royal conspiracy theorists. Of course it hasn't. Well, joining us now is PR and brand consultant Mark Bukowski. And uh, we can also be speaking to Tom Bauer, royal biographer, a bit later. Uh, but uh, starting off with you, Mark, I mean, look... I think anybody watching this from the outside would say, in terms of PR, it's either genius at keeping the world completely focused on Kensington Palace and making our royal family the most sort of famous and talked about in the world, or it's an utter disaster. What's your read? It's the latter, isn't it, Mark? <laughs> Somewhere in the middle, isn't it? I mean, look, um, this, this is a disaster, but from every crisis, there is an opportunity, and the opportunity now is for all family to think about how they deal with the media. I mean, there's a number of factors that roll into one on this, you know. Um, you you try to give a certain amount of information about certain key members of the royal family's health. One of them happens to be the king. The second is the most photographed woman in the world who has been doing all the heavy lifting while all the sort of Harry and Meghan stuff has been taking off. And you take her out of the equation and communicate that she's been ill and people are very empathetic towards that. Um, but you give people a certain certain amount of information, but people need more. And that's the problem. In the old days, it'll be never explained, never complained. This sort of um, tactile way of trying to deal with the media would have probably sorted things out, but it's not. And of course, you've allowed this enormous vacuum to be filmed, filled by conspiracy theorists. That, that's it, isn't like... it, Mark, though? The, 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 I think that both palaces, uh, Buckingham and uh, Kensington, have made a mistake here. Now, it's encouraging that they've decided to cut us in on a bit of the information about them. For example, the King, uh, you know, impressively telling us I'm suffering from cancer. That resulted in a lot of men going to get checked, so uh, good for the King. However, it does mean people will say, well, what kind of cancer? Uh, we're yeah, not told it, that. It, it, then, then you've got we, you've got Kate, I've had abdominal surgery, you won't hear from me again until Easter. And people go, what kind of abdominal surgery? This dribs and drabs, little bits of information, I suppose it's an improvement, but it is not satisfactory because, as you say, if uh, you only give a part of the information, uh, people will pour their own speculation into the vacuum. Yeah, of course they will. We've seen conspiracy theories surround iconic names, from Jeff K to Marilyn Monroe to James Dean, you know, to Lord Lucan. We love a conspiracy theory, and that's a trap they've fallen into. Give a little bit of information. They should have dealt with this. And this is because, you know, William is very protective of his family and his wife, and, you know, she, he wants to put this warm arm around it and looking for privacy. You can't have privacy in the royal family. The royal family, it depends on the level of publicity and noise created. And usually it's pomp and ceremony that they thrive from. But, you know, this is this is really made everybody question whether or not they're fit for purpose in terms of the way they deal with the media. It's a slimmed down royal family. And, you know, I have a theory about this. I think why it's become such an enormous story, not just because of sort of uh, the disruption from Harry and Meghan, but there was a little series, a very successful series that went three times around the world, which was The Crown. And many people in different countries around the world actually thought that wasn't fiction. It, it was a documentary, fact. yeah. Exactly. So, therefore, they're expecting there to be more here, but they're not telling us. It's all about control. And they should have actually stopped these, these ridiculous rumours at source and to a certain extent. They should have got friends in, in, in places, you know, doing a little bit of messaging to key influencers. If not, they've actually got the lunatics, you know, suggesting all sorts of things, or, you know, which um, falls into the flat earth conspiracy. And even yesterday, this picture that was snapped, they probably did it semi on purpose, knowing there's a thousand um, cameras surrounding that farm shop that it would be captured but of course everybody thinks oh that's not real you know it's definitely a fake they're not wearing wedding rings all this ridiculous hunk of and of course the mere fact that they put out a fake photo or a doctored photo to you know to appease everybody on mother's day made the situation worse so it's time for them to rethink how they deal with social media how they how they communicate in the modern world where the world's rumors are run by unregulated media and not by regulated <laughs> media have a sensible conversation with 
But, I mean, do, do they actually have to deal with social media? Because it's a cesspit of madness anyway. They're dealt, they'll dealt, dealt in part with mainstream media. And surely, you know, the problem is you feed the beast and the beast stays hungry. If they say, they've said it's abdominal surgery, so everyone wants to know what type of abdominal surgery. If they give the next detail, people want to know even more gory details. And at the centre of all of this, there is a human who might be in a pretty fragile state, both physically and mentally, from something she's going through as the world's most photographed woman. Absolutely spot on. That is the problem. You take away the one person who's been doing the heavy lifting for the royal family for months and months and months. You telegraph that she's been. And I think people have a huge amount of sympathy. I don't think people are blaming Kate for any of this nonsense at the moment. But the thing is, they've got to have a modern idea of, of, of actually how... Look, the royal family are brilliant, have proved that they are... They, they, they are excellent at actually brevity. I mean, that statement about, you know, um, opinions may differ that came out after the, the Oprah interview was a genius piece of writing because it, it said so much with so little text. And I think that's where you need to look at it. And it seems to me there's disjointed. There's a media relations side, different palaces. And look, and they're suffering from really some bad negative publicity, you know, with health issues, Prince, Prince Andrew running around, and who steps into the into the into the front there to take the heavy lifting now? You know, there was a lot of noise around, um, you know, to Edward's sort of sixtieth birthday party. Didn't even touch the sides. Yeah. So there are some hard working roles, yeah, but the they're thing, not. The thing is, Mark. The thing is, Mark. The thing is, Mark. You, you, if I if I say to you, I've hurt myself, you then say to me, Oh, what have you done? I, I'm not telling you. <laughs> it's, not, it's not enough. It's a, it, then you'll go, well, what exactly is wrong? Right? That's what we're going through. Mark, Mark, we've got to go. Great to talk to you, as usual. You still owe me that lunch. Uh, that's Ooh, uh, Mark Borkowski. <laughs> yeah, you can. Great. You certainly Thanks can. for the future lunch, Mark. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs>